Hello everybody! My name is Alethea Thomas and welcome to my channel. If you are into books and bookish things, then you're in the right place. Today I am filming the mid-year book freakout tag. It's been a really long time since I've done a tag, so I was kind of excited to do this one. I didn't participate last year in the mid-year freakout tag, and that was because I was, you know, I had really just joined YouTube at that point, and it was June, and I, I think I really only started my channel last year in July. Uh, maybe very end of June into July and so I didn't really know much about book tags either um, didn't wasn't really a part of the community yet um, and I was just like okay well you know let's let's try out the book tag uh, the mid-year book tag so when I saw this roll around for this year I was like oh I need to do I really need to do this one because I think it'd be a good kind of check-in for the year so far anyway so I'm excited to do it so I will get right to the questions I feel like I've had a pretty good year so far in reading I have read some things that really were really good I've had multiple five-star uh, reads for this year I wanted to mostly concentrate on classics when I started this channel and I've pretty well stuck to that I have recently decided that I want to bring in more uh, you know recently uh, written books some more modern books and I uh, kind of want to branch out a little bit more because I have pretty much read every book every classic book that was on this list I started out with which was the Oxford you know 20 books um, that they expect every one of their uh, maybe not every one of but they, they would expect that their English students to read and that post that I have in that original video and I'll, I'll put the link to the video here that post actually changed they changed it to 10 books but in, in the video, I talk about the 20 books that they recommended. And so I've read nearly all of those. I think the only one I haven't read uh, that I need to read is The Grapes of Wrath, which I don't know if... I, I don't have that scheduled for this year, so maybe I'll get to it next year. I don't know for sure. But yes, mostly classics this year, a few modern things recently, and I will be including those in this mid-year freakout. So otherwise, it's been a, it's been a really great reading year so far. I had set myself a goal also on Goodreads to read like 100 books for the year. I don't know if I'm actually going to make that goal because I'm somewhere in the 30s right now as far as reading. But I'm trying to be strategic about it now and I've decided I'm just going to read things that are shorter. One of my, my struggles was actually War and Peace being so long. Um, and I'm done with it now, thank goodness, but, you know, it was just, it was so long, it was taking up way too much time, and I felt like I couldn't read other things, you know, while I was in War and Peace, and it's just one book, and it's over a thousand pages, and I feel like, well, that, that could have equaled out to, like, almost three books in total on its own, so there's three right there that maybe I could have gotten in there. We're going to get as close to 100 as we can. I'm not married to the number or anything, but we will get there. It will be good. It'll be fine. So uh, grab beverage of your choice, and um, let's go ahead and get to the questions as my computer decides it's going to fall asleep. Oh, my goodness. Coffee. Mmm. So good. Okay. The questions. So the first question is, what is the best book you've read so far in 2023? I've, I've had a few best books this year because I consider my five-star reads my best books. But um, Empire of Storms and Kingdom of Ash, both by Sarah J. Maas. Excellent. Excellent ending to the Throne of Glass series. They are such good books. I loved, loved, loved them, especially Empire of Storms. I feel like Empire of Storms was the superior book, but that's just me. Um, so 
really loved them, really enjoyed the crap out of both of those books, and just absolutely loved it. Then on the classic side of things, um, The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway, so good. Oh my gosh, that was so emotional. I just, I loved it. I loved every minute of The Old Man in the Sea, and it was so good. I listened to The Old Man in the Sea, uh, and it was read by Charlton Heston, which was probably the top way you could listen to The Old Man in the Sea. So good. So absolutely wonderful. Charlton Heston's voice was so rich and deep and masculine. It was just really good. Um, I absolutely love the character Santiago. Just a fabulous book. If you have not read Ernest Hemingway, this might be the place to start with Ernest Hemingway. It was just so, so lovely, so emotional, so good. I have no other words for it. Just an excellent book. I enjoyed, uh, really enjoyed The Old Man in the Sea. And then my favorite book probably this year, the best book that I have read this year, is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This book was so wonderful. It was romantic. It was cozy. It was unsettling in places. It was a thriller. It was a mystery. It was all of those things wrapped up into one story and done so well. Uh, du Maurier's just knowledge and usage of the English language is so rich and so wonderful that I could not get enough of that story, and I want more. When the story ended, I was just like, this, this cannot possibly be the end. I want more of this story. So, but there's no more to the story. It ends how it ends, and it's, it's so good. It's so good. So I encourage anyone to, if you have not read it, Please read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I hope you will love it as well. So now we'll get to the second question. Question two is, what is the best sequel you have read so far in 2023? Uh, probably Empire of Storms again. You know, uh, but again, Sarah J. Moss, Empire of Storms. But, but I have, but, but, but I have a late minute addition to this question. And that one is going to be The Wicked King by Holly Black. I decided to listen to the Cruel Prince series, uh, the Folk of the Air series, I think is what she's called that. And I didn't expect it to be as good as it is, especially it being for young adult. Really good. Really good. Holly Black, I feel like I have found a new soulmate in Holly Black. I think that I would could really enjoy the rest of her writing as well. So I'm really interested in reading more of her. But um, The Wicked King, such a good sequel to The Cruel Prince. Oh my gosh. I actually just finished it a few minutes ago and my jaw was on the floor. I could not believe where that went. It was just unbelievable. Enjoyed it so much. And uh, I'm really looking forward to now going on to the next book, which is The Queen of Nothing. So uh, I think that does it for question two now. So question number three. What new releases have you not read yet but want to? I think that I would like to read Sanderson's uh, Tress of the Emerald Sea. It's been a really long time since I read a Sanderson book. And like years. I haven't picked up one of his his books, at least any of his recent stuff, in a while. In fact, I'm thinking of going ahead and rereading Stormlight Archives anyway, because it's just been so long. I read some of that stuff when I was in my 20s and late, late teens. God, it's been a long time. <laughs> But um, I'm, I'm interested in reading more of his, his work because it's been a long time. And uh, yeah, as, as soon as I get around to it, I'll probably do that. I don't know about the Mistborn series. Um, I don't know if that relates to Tress. I don't know if that relates to Tress in the Emerald Sea at all, but I'm really interested in that particular book. It looks cool, and I can't wait to, uh, to get a hold of that one. 
Uh, Fourth Wing, another one I'd like to uh, pick up and read. I'm in this fantasy mode. I really, I really just want to like devour more fantasy books lately because I was focused on the classics for so much of this year and last year that I'm, I'm starting to feel that hankering now for, you know, my, my junk food, my, my fantasy novels. I really need it. And then uh, the other one was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies because I think that's a really cute little idea and I'm hoping it's cute. I'm really hoping it's cute, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Question four. What's your most anticipated release for the second half of 2023? Probably The Weaver and the, uh, the, Weaver and the Witch Queen by Genevieve Gornacek. Um, she's the author of The Witch's Heart and I loved The Witch's Heart. I absolutely love that because she took Norse mythology and she told the tale of Angri Boda, who's, uh, I think she was like a witch uh, goddess of some kind. And I don't think she, she was the mother of hell, but she was also the mother of the world snake and Fenrir, the, the wolf. So um, I just really, really enjoyed that book so much. It was so emotional. And Angri Voda was just such a relatable character. Um, that she was basically used all the time by Loki. And she, just, she didn't want anything to do with the other gods. And wanted just to live her own life. But she didn't get to do that because she had her own destiny she had to fulfill. Really. But such a good book. Um, so really looking forward to, again, uh, The Weaver and the Witch. Because I expect excellence out of Genevieve Gornacek. And... Hopefully we'll get excellence again. It would be great. Uh, number five, biggest disappointment of 2023. Probably Sirens and Muses by Antonio Angres. It's the only book so far I've read this year that has disappointed me. It just, it seemed like it had such a lot of promise. It seemed like the idea was really strong and it would have just been a, a really good book but the substance to me really wasn't there. So take that as you will. If you like that book, don't don't hate me. But it's just my opinion, just my personal opinion. Uh, question six. What was your biggest surprise of 2023? The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Man, I did not expect at all for that series to be as good as it is. But Holly Black has surprised me. I generally don't like YA, like, at all. I feel like I've, I'm, I'm too much of an adult now to enjoy YA books. But she has m proved me wrong. She has totally proved me wrong. And maybe because of her now, I'll try even more YA than I used to read. I don't know. We'll see. We will see. Uh, new favorite author. Khalil Gibran is probably a new favorite author. Um, his book, The Broken Wings, so beautifully written. The prose, oh my gosh, the prose. It's almost like, it's almost like reading the Song of Psalms, the Song of Solomon, that, that kind of, it's not flowery, flowery, but it's just beautiful just flows. It's so beautiful. Same with uh, Daphne du Maurier. Very beautiful prose. Not nearly as flowery as, uh, you know, Khalil Gibram is. Um, and then probably Holly Black. Again, she just, she just surprised the heck out of me. So it was very well, very well written. Very modern though. Very modern in her usage of language. Uh, but really nice. Really nice though. So those are, um, you know, new favorite authors for me right now. Newest fictional crush. Ooh, uh, probably Lee Bardugo's character, Daniel Arlington. Um, but, but my all-time favorite is still always going to be Mr. Rochester, um, from Jane Eyre. So, I like, I like a sarcastic, gruff, grumpy old man. I just, I love, <laughs> I love them. It's just the way it is. 
Um, yeah, you can have your Mr. Darcy's. I will always have my Mr. Rochester. <laughs> um, number, no, question number nine. Who's, uh, well, who's your favorite new fictional character? Probably Prince Oak. Um, he's just so damn cute in Holly Black's book, um, the Cruel Prince series. He's just such a cute little fun character. I love uh, little elfin children. I just think they're adorable. I have little elfin children of my own that run around and drive me crazy. But um, it's fun to read about them as well. It's just, he's such a cute little guy, and I've just got this picture of him in my mind. Not too far off from what my son looks like, but, um, but such a cute character, such a cute little, such, just a cute idea, the whole book, the whole story. I love the entire story that she's telling in that. It's just so good. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really have another new favorite character, I think. I like nameless characters a lot, though, in, uh, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Uh, I like, I, I like a good nameless character. That's always fun, too. So, question 10. What book made you cry this year? The Old Man and the Sea. I was in tears. I was in tears and in tears and in tears, and it just hurt, and that's so... That story is so emotional uh, and devastating and oh my gosh, I can't, I can't, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. I'm going to have to read that again at some point in the near future. Just, just an excellent book. If you, like I said, if you have not re read it, if you have not read it, read it. You need to read it. There is a reason they try, they try and have you read this in college. There is a reason if you've ever taken an English literature course, especially like an American English literature course, I'm pretty sure they make you read Hemingway. And there is a reason because it's really good. Question number 11, what book made you happy? Brideshead Revisited. I loved that book. It made me happy. I love English wit and I love English satire and I just love sarcasm. It is just hilarious. I, I loved, especially, it's, it's mostly the whole first couple of thirds of the book. The first two thirds of the book are really, uh, really funny, actually. They're hilarious. Um, just reading about how these upper crust, you know, English, Englishmen are getting through school and then after school what happens, you know, with that and, and just the snobbery um, it's just so funny to me. It just makes me laugh. So Brideshead Revisited made me happy. It did also make me sad kind of near the end, but not as, not nearly as sad as the old man in the sea made me sad. Oh my gosh, the, the tears would not stop with the old man in the sea. Um, number 12, favorite book to movie adaptation you've seen so far this year. Um, there is a War and Peace adaptation from 2016 that's on Amazon right now. It's really good. I enjoyed that a lot, and I'm actually watching that fully. Um, I, I watched like the first couple of episodes of it, but I didn't want to spoil the rest of the book. So I, I read the book, and now that I'm done with the book, I'm going to finish up the actual, uh, that's the series of War and Peace. So... That one's really good. I love the costuming in it. It's just so pretty. Um, and also the sets are really nice. There's not a whole lot of the CGI business going on because I think it was in 2016. There wasn't nearly as much of that. I think nowadays there's so much CGI in these that I just, I don't like it. I don't like seeing, being able to tell that there's CGI. I don't like it at all. Um, the other... Uh, book to movie adaptation though that I watched recently was again Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. It's um, it's on Netflix. It's Rebecca. It's it's a movie. It's it's excellent. It's really good. The characters are really played well by you know their actors. Really good movie. So you should watch that. Question number thirteen. Favorite post you've written so far this year? I don't write posts. I don't have a I don't have a blog, so I'm 
guessing that's what this question refers to, but um, my favorite video that I've posted this year has been my review of Wuthering Heights. I will put that, um, I'll link that here as well. Wuthering Heights, it was such a mind a mind F. I have no other words for it. That book was just such a mind fuck <laughs> that it screwed with me. I, I first was not jiving with it. I didn't like it. I thought, you know, all the characters were horrible, all bad people. I don't like it. Why am I reading this? This is just drawn out, horrible, and everyone's getting abused. And then I kind of sat with it for a little bit. And then I was like, okay, there's something, there's something to this. There's more to this than the surface level. So then I started, you know, kind of relaxing myself a bit more and kind of thinking about and examining the situation and the characters and everything in Wuthering Heights. And I actually really like the book. It may be one of my favorite books, but I haven't really determined that yet. I've just gone through it one time. So it's just been one read through. And I'm thinking I need to read it again to to kind of get an even better understanding of my feelings on it and the 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 more that's in there. There's there is more to the story than the surface level, and I want to get a better understanding of that with time. So I'm probably gonna pick it up again next year, maybe around the same time I read it. I think it was like January, February, but I'm gonna pick it up again and read it again. And uh, and figure out how I really feel about it. But it is my most candid review that I've done. And I was just kind of emotionally in there and being completely honest about how I felt about it. Because I had to get it off my chest like that second when I sat down and was done reading it. Because I was like, I can't, I can't live with this. I've got to get this off my chest now. So I really enjoyed that video. And, and I was surprised at, at how it came out. So I'm hoping you guys will watch it and enjoy it. It's really funny. I think it's really hilarious. So uh, what's the most beautiful book you've bought this year? The most beautiful book. Hmm. The most beautiful book. I like this one, The Essex Serpent. It is a paperback. Um by Sarah Perry. But look at that. It's just gorgeous. And it's supposed to be like a murder mystery maybe. But yeah, it's just got this absolutely fantastic cover design. I love it. Uh, most other one that most beautiful. I don't know. What have I bought this year other than that one that's the most beautiful? Hmm. To be honest, I don't really buy that many books based on their their beauty necessarily, but I am starting to collect trophy books when I finish them. So I have found that these Chiltern classics are actually very pretty, very beautiful. They are embossed and they have shiny foiling underneath. Um, they don't have you know, really nice end papers or anything. They're just, you know, standard black. But these are really beautiful, I think. So that one was Wuthering Heights. See you there. And then this one's Jane Eyre, which is probably currently my favorite book. Yeah, that that's what that looks like. Again, the end papers are are also black. This one is Little Women, which is just the first half of Little Women because these are UK editions. So I have to buy Good Wives when Good Wives is out. And I don't know if Chiltern has put out Good Wives yet or if they, if they ever will. I'm not sure. I'm trying to get the sticker off. There we go. They, the stickers peel off really well, too, um, when, you, when you get these. But I would say that these are the most beautiful books I have purchased this year. And this one's The Great Gadsby, which is one of my favorites. And these are the, the stickers that come on them 
down here in the corner but like I said you know they they peel off very nicely but I just think these would be absolutely awesome all stacked up in a row you know especially you know you get all the Brontes together or something all of let's get this focusing off of me um, you know all of the little collections together and I think they they look absolutely gorgeous so they are the trophy books um, but I think that's it for like my most beautiful books that I have purchased this year. Um, maybe the Throne of Glass box set too, but I don't want to drag that thing out. Um, it's It was a box set that has all of the paperbacks. That's right. And it's, you know, they're, they're okay. It's But it's not the most beautiful. But I definitely think those chill turns are probably the most beautiful. And then the last question is question number 15. And what books do you really need to read by the end of this year? I don't really need to read any specific thing by the end of this year. Probably War and Peace was the one I really felt strongly about and was like, I have to finish this book this year. That is a goal book. So that's done. And I'm so happy that it's done. But what I think I'd really like to pick up very soon, and I'm thinking maybe the month of October is the most appropriate, so maybe September or October, I don't know, but uh, The Phantom of the Opera. I have never read it, and I know there are several people out there who it's like their favorite book, and I'm interested to see if I would really love it too, and I hope it's really good. Um, I'm very familiar, very, very familiar with the, uh, the Broadway, you know, play, The Phantom of the Opera. I'm not going to start singing it. <laughs> I hear it in my head now. I'm not going to start singing it. But it is one of my favorites. And it just the, especially when you watch them like in the early 90s and the 80s, those productions, they're just so over the top and just crazy though the whole thing was crazy and that's probably what I loved the most when I was a kid is you know those over-the-top productions of the Phantom of the Opera were so good so funny so crazy so good I absolutely absolutely loved them but um, but yeah that that concludes the uh, mid-year freakout book tag I hope that you guys have enjoyed the video. I hope that uh, your mid-year freakouts are just as good as mine. I hope that your reading journey for 2023 is even more filled with action, and adventure, mystery, intrigue, coziness, vibes, all of the things that we love as a book community because I know I love them and so you will love them as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. Bye-bye.